One More Chance Written by Victoria Temple Summary This is a story of a man that failed as a husband and father. It is only when he was divorced that he can work on saving what relationships he could. It was too late for his wife, but he hoped his children would forgive him and be part of his life. Then he gets an opportunity to go back in time and have a chance once more at doing things right. Will he succeed this time? And now to the story. Let me present myself. I am a middle-aged man that lives alone and is on disability aid. This means that I have a lot of time to think of what I have done in my life. There are so many regrets and mistakes. I know that they made me the way I am now. However, I know that I would never do the same mistakes if I had one more chance. I should be happy with the way I am. I have two sons, that are now young men. I am so proud of them both. My oldest son, whose name is Christopher is married to a great woman and they have a child. My grandchild is so lucky that he has such great parents. I think that Christopher remembers all the mistakes I have done as a dad and decided to learn from them. My other son, Nicholas, is full of life. He is very interested in politics and diplomacy and has done great in his studies. He has also traveled a lot. You never know where he will go next. Nicholas is full of life and adventure and is capable of great success. I was divorced when my boys were teens. The divorce was fully my fault. I have done things that she could not deal with. We never speak anymore and have not really spoken with each other in 20 years. I will be honest, I accept that we are divorced, but I miss the friendship we had. I would love to be in contact with her but must accept that she has chosen to have me out of her life. I should consider myself lucky. My sons still visit me and they do not avoid me. I have met many my age that has children that they only see once a year. This is sad and makes me grateful that my boys visit me when they can. I met Mia when I was very young. I was only 20 and was waiting to get into some education. Mia was my age, and what somewhat of a tomboy. She was very religious and was not as fashionable as the other girls. This made her interesting. We were friends at first but fell in love with each other. We got married and this is like winning the jackpot. I remember when she walked down the church. My eyes flooded with tears as I thought she was the most beautiful woman in the world. What did I ever do to deserve this? I was the luckiest man in the world. We went on a honeymoon and this was when we had our first fight. It was my fault. Since I was a child, I noticed some very dominating women that seemed like they controlled their husbands were wimps. I did not want to be a wimp so when my newly wedded wife suggested something, I said the opposite and we had a foolish fight. Was I mature enough to get married? Married life changed me. Mia showed nothing for love and patience with me. However, I slowly became a manipulating and selfish man. I became even cruel. The things I would say to Mia showed no respect and hurt her so much. I would let her do all the practical things such as housework. It is no defense that I got frustrated because she thought my help was never good enough. Despite the change in my personality. I loved Mia more and more every day that went. The problem, of course, was that I never showed it. We had two boys that made me so proud. Again, my personality shone through. I stated at being the best father they could have but would let Mia take more and more responsibility. I tried my best to be a good father. The problem is that my job was working in a preschool with other people's children. So when I came home, I was so tired and wanted peace. Of course, I never considered that Mia could also be tired, as she was a nurse. This is also a demanding job. As my children grew older, I started slowly getting depressed. 
I would easily get anxiety, at times even heard voices as well as social phobia. I never thought there was something mentally wrong with me. Mia never considered this either. I thought that it was just stressed and this meant that I would demand more peace at home. This was a confusing time for Mia and my sons. My mood changed from hour to hour. At times I would be the happy father that would take them to the zoo or eat a burger. Other times I would scold them. Christopher suffered most from this. He had a different personality than I had, and at times I could simply not understand the way he thought. I treated him as bad as I did with Mia. I never hit, but my words hurt enough. One thing was scolding my children and of course Mia. I would end up locking myself in my office. If Mia came in usually to discuss the next day's agenda and who was supposed to do what, I would kick her out and get very mad at her. When I was alone again, I would feel very guilty about how I treated her. The problem was that I did not want to leave my safe zone to speak with her. I would go to bed to snuggle up against her and hope that it was forgotten. Christopher got the same treatment. Mia told me that I was an absent member of the family. She felt like our family was in danger. She felt like our marriage was in danger. I did not listen. I could have said that there was something wrong with me, that I only felt safe in my room. However, I had no idea what was wrong with me. I knew what she said was right, I thought that the love for her was enough. Nicholas had an advantage. He could come to my room, where we would sit on my lap and we would look at football games. I do not know why he was allowed to come in. He was very persistent, and just smiled and came in if I told him to go out. The smile acted as puppy eyes, that connected to a few human feelings that I had. Needless to say, Mia got very tired of all this. She would ask me if I wanted to be a husband or a father. She would ask me what was so interesting that I should lock myself in my room. Mia felt lonely and missed the man that she fell in love with. She did her best to get me on the right track again. There was a sign of hope when we went on holiday to the Czech Republic. For the first time in years, I felt as if we were back together and I enjoyed every minute with my children. The problem was when we came home again. Things went back to what they were. The hope we had from holidays disappeared in a flash. Mia did not see when I cried and I did not see when she cried. When we were together, we either ignored each other or argued. We put on the show as a happy couple when we got visitors, but even this became worse. I would not come out when we had visitors. I would sit in my room with anxiety and listening to voices. The visitors nor Mia knew this. What thoughts they had could not have been good. Mia by now had enough. She told me that we should see a marriage counselor. This made me angry. Why did we need to do this? I loved Mia. There was no question about this. However, after reflecting on my marriage and my performance as a dad, I could see why we should speak with someone. I loved Mia, but was this more as a best friend than a wife? I knew I said harsh things to her and even at times ignored her. I was simply not a good husband. She was the perfect wife. She was also the perfect mother. Christopher said once that I was great with all the children at preschool and his friends, just not with him. This sums up how I was as a dad. I wanted to tell Mia that we needed to see a counselor. However unexpected stress and events caused my world to crumble. The next time Mia spoke with me, I was admitted to a mental institution. Was it too late? Some people have had a very hard childhood, and I am one of these people. I was someone that simply locked them in the back of my mind and threw away the key. So you can imagine when images of the worst childhood possible flashed through my head. I was the main star of the images going through my head. 
At first, I could not believe as to why these bad images were plaguing me. They could not be true. Then why were they popping up in my mind? The result was that my world collapsed and I was admitted to the mental institution. I was in the section where they lock you in. It was like a prison. It's amazing that I created my own prison in my room for years and felt safe. However, at the mental institution, I did not have a choice. I spent all the time in a small room and this did not help the thoughts from going away. It is hard to explain the effects of these flashbacks. They were very graphic and the abuse and it was like I could feel the pain once again. The problem was that I could not accept these flashbacks. I assumed it must be my imagination at its worst. Mia visited me at the mental institution and told me that I should take these flashbacks seriously. They were so powerful that they managed to put me in a mental place. Sometimes I do not know who you are, she said, you get depressed and angry and you hide from the world. Other times you are the man that I once knew. I never know what to expect. These images that go through your head can be the key to this behavior. We can't go on with you as you have been. I will end up in here. When Mia left, I thought a lot about what she had to say. I was sure that what was happening in my head was just my imagination. I had a good childhood. However, I could see where I was a failure as a husband and a father. I loved my wife and I loved my children. However, I took this for granted and never shown it. I thought of Mia, that was getting tired of the marriage. I thought of Christopher that could grow up resenting me and blame me for being too hard on him. I wrote Mia a very long letter. The basic message was that I know that I was a bad husband and father. I wrote that my heart was in the right place. I just had to use this time at the mental institution to evaluate my life and to work at being a better person. I wrote that I hoped that Mia would forgive me and after this mental illness was over, we could live a happy life. Mia cried when she saw the letter. It seemed like she was surprised that I wrote that I still loved her. This led to long talks where we would talk about the problems that we had. It gave Mia a chance to vent all the frustrations she had. This was hard for me, as it seemed like all the problems we had were my fault. They say there are two sides to every coin, but not in my marriage. I became depressed after Mia confirmed how bad I was. It did not help that my mother-in-law came and told me to take the flashback seriously. She told me that I once told her that I experienced the worst things in my childhood. This confused me as I did not remember a thing. Everyone was telling me that I managed to repress the memories and lock the memories in the back of my mind. Somehow these memories were triggered and I found them hard to believe. The next few days, reality struck me. I now started to remember things quite clearly. This was hard for Mia, as my reaction was to feel sorry for myself. When she visited me, I only talked about myself and did not seem interested when she wanted to talk about what it was like being a mother alone with two children. I did not want to speak about the boys. I just talked about myself and the horrors of my childhood. It became harder for Mia to visit me. She stopped bringing the children as she did not want them to see me like I was. She also tried to get me to think about her and the children. Maybe I had a bad childhood, but my life had so much potential now. If I wanted I could be a good father and happily married. I did not listen to Mia. This often ended up with her crying. Mia had enough. She walked out one day after she came for just a few minutes. She was in tears telling me that she cannot do this anymore. She told me she needed a break. This devastated me. I expected her to support me while I was at a mental institution. I rang to her several times and let her know this. 
Mia's reaction was to dread these phone calls and beg that I would give her some space. I did not do this. This ended with Mia sending me a letter. I have asked you to give me some space and I needed a break. You do not realize how hard this has been for me. My husband is very sick and has been sick for years. You have had doctors and psychiatrists at the hospital to speak with and help you. I have had no one. This is why I needed a break. I needed to find new energy to help you and to accept the sickness. While you are at the mental hospital, I have been alone with two children. I also have to work, and this is despite the confusion in my mind. The whole thing has stressed me. I feel so alone right now. I will be honest with you, I think we can both admit that I have been alone for years. You say that you love me, but you never had any good things to say to me or the children. You did not want to be with us. You hid in your room and shut the people that you needed the most out of your life. I needed this break to ask myself who you are. You are not the kind, gentle loving man that I fell in love with. I could deal with the sickness you have. However, I cannot go back to the marriage that we had. I do not believe that you can change. You are a sick man, but that is not what worries me. You have become very selfish and egocentric. You think only of yourself. Since you were admitted to the mental hospital, you have seldom asked about me or the children. You just talked about how you were suffering and confused. We are a family and it is not just all about you. You say that you love me and the children, yet you are very manipulating and have become a monster. Again I ask myself, who are you? Was the way you were at the start just an act? Were you a monster all the time? You cannot change. You are who you are. Mia. We were now separated. I was sure that she would come to her senses and remember what our wedding vows were. It took me some time to see that Mia was serious. She stopped visiting me and told the hospital that she would not allow me home. I was surprised that the hospital even allowed this. They knew that the house was also in my name and I was still the father of my children. This prolonged my stay at the mental hospital. I was still being selfish and expected the world to be sorry for me. Not once did I think of how the children were or why my wife was so set on this separation. I could have saved my marriage. It was a bit late when I was in a mental place. As Mia never visited me, I could never speak with her. Looking back at it, it was too late to save a marriage. I should have shown that I could change years earlier. Mia wanted a divorce and custody of the children. She came to visit me so I could sign the papers. She pleaded that I would think of someone else but myself. I did this and within weeks the divorce was final. I was finally released from the mental hospital and lived in a detached house. I was on disability because my mental health swung so much. The main thing is that I was alone. This was so hard. I missed Mia and the children so much. I had to learn how to be by myself. I still did not want to go out and meet people. I had anxiety every time I was in a crowd. I had to cook do the housework and things I always let other people would do. It was an uphill struggle. It was nearly like I was in mourning. Every day I would think about Mia and hope she would be back in my arms. This did not happen. Mia did not speak to me since the day we got divorced. I suggested that we would meet in some cafe or just be friends. She was very clear that she did not even want to be friends. She wanted me out of her life. This was hard for me to accept. Did Mia not know that she was my life? Did she really think I was an evil monster? Mia met another man called Steen. They ended up getting married. It was at this stage that I knew that Mia moved on and I was her past. 
I met Steen a few times and must admit he was a nice man that took care of Mia. I could see that they really loved each other. This made me look deep in my soul and ask myself who I was. What I saw was ugly and many things Mia has said were true. I had to work on myself. This was also because I still had two children and they still visited me. So I started trying to think of them and not be as moody or sick. I did not want them to worry about me. I knew I had many failings as a dad. I needed to prove to my children that people can change. I needed to show them that I loved them. It was a slow process and this process will never stop. Step by step I tried being the father that they deserved. I could never make up for what I have done to them, but I could give them new experiences. The children noticed I was trying to change and they gave me a chance to do so. I was a winner. I have seen them with a new light. I never thought I had anything in common with Christopher, and this was not true. When I did not pressure him and gave him a chance to be himself, he was one of the most interesting people I knew. Both my boys grew to be young men, and they have enriched my life and helped me become a better man. The hardest thing to do was to forgive myself. I was a person I did not like. What would I be like if we never got divorced? I had to forgive my failings and be a light for the few people that were in my life. I accepted that Mia finally found love and was happy. I wanted her to be happy. I wanted her to live her fairy tale. As for me, I decided that I did not want to find new love. Mia would always be the love of my life. We were only married 14 years, and many of those were a mess. This did not stop me from thinking that Mia would always have that special place in my heart. Things change, and my life was drastically changed when I was out shopping one day. On my way home, I noticed that an old woman was carrying several bags. How could one woman carry so much? I offered to carry them for her. This was a struggle as they were very heavy. Still, I did not want the old woman to carry them. We talked on the way to her flat. She lived alone with her cats and was very lonely. I listened as she told me about her life, that was so sad. I did not complain about mine. I just listened to her. It seemed as if she had a lot to say as she did not know when she would speak with a human again. When we were at her flat, I gave her my telephone number and told her to ring me anytime. I told her that she should also ring when she was shopping as we could shop together and I could help her. This overwhelmed her as she told me, if more people were as kind as you, there would be no lonely people. I want to give you a present. You see, I have special powers and can give people a wish and make their wishes come true. Tell me, what is your wish? I was in shock and just looked at her. Was she so senile that she thought she can make dreams come true? What was my wish? So here I was with a woman that thought she could do magic. It would hurt her if I mocked her for thinking this. I decided that I would play along. It was her way of saying thank you, which shows that society is all screwed up when people think that they need to give something when they get helped or even noticed. She did raise an interesting point. If I had one wish, what would it be? I mean I was now used the life I had and quite happy about it. It would be nice to be financially secure. It would be nice to stop the aging process. Losing weight would be nice. Then we have the big wishes like world peace, no hunger, and more tolerance and respect. Okay, I have thought about it I said with a smile. I want to go back in time to my wedding day, so I can do things right this time. I think you must think about this and make sure this is your wish, she warned, there are two things to consider. One is that you are not the same person. You will have the personality and memories you have now. You will just have your younger body. Everyone else would have some personality they have now, 
but they will not remember anything. I have made up my mind. There is another thing. Something that people do not think about. You may learn from the mistakes you made, however you will make new ones. Are you so unhappy with your life that you want to go back in time? I told her that my mind was made up. I could never forgive myself and this was a chance to make everything better. Besides, I did not believe that she could do magic. I expected her to come with excuses why it could not be done. The room became black with stars. It looked like I was floating in space. I could see the world spinning. I was afraid but it was a beautiful sight. The earth starting spinning the other way and much quicker. I could see city lights turn on and off in a blink of an eye. The woman was not a fake. She could do magic. I looked down at my body and I could see that I was getting slimmer and younger. I felt also that my lungs and heart were stronger. Before I knew it, I was in the church where I was married. I looked around and figured this was the day of my wedding so many years ago. Well it's not years ago now, as I was once again in the past. I was confused as I never believed in magic. Here I was standing. Once again young and about to be married. This time, I would be the perfect husband and father. The priest got my attention as he said for the second time if I would take Mia to be my wife. The priest was impatient as I shouted that of course I would. Mia and I were once again married. Everything was as I remembered. It was a lovely feeling with my young body. I was also once again with Mia, and she was speaking with me. The wedding party went great. I kept on thinking that this was my chance to prove to myself that I changed as a person. Mia was smiling and it was the day of her life. After we ate the cake, she sat in a corner and was very quiet. I do not remember that this happened. I sat down next to her and held her hand. We said nothing. I honestly thought that she needed time to let all the events of the wedding to sink in. It was not until her mother came and reminded Mia that it was her wedding day, and she should enjoy it. I just feel so stupid, Mia responded, it's like the whole day, the wedding, the party, everything. It's like deja vu. It's like I have tried it before. I know it's stupid that I feel this way. I could have fainted when I heard this. The old woman did warn that some of Mia's emotions and the way she thought would be part of her if I traveled to the past. This statement was not stupid. It showed that Mia was not exactly like when we got married. She had some bits of her future self in her. The honeymoon went fine. We were once again in Tunisia. The time came when I remembered that we had an argument in the first honeymoon. This time we did not have an argument. When Mia suggested that we would do something, I just nodded my head and agreed. I was so proud of myself that I was now doing what Mia wanted. It did not stop from another argument to start. Mia was frustrated and asked me why I never suggested what we would do. Why did I always have to agree with her? She told me she wanted me to start taking initiative, as that would strengthen our marriage. I agreed with her and told her that we could both decide things. When we got home, we started with our daily life. The first time was getting used to the life as a married person. We would often fight because she thought my cleaning was not good enough, and she depended a lot on her parents. It hurt my pride when she would ask her dad for help over the smallest thing. Now I had another chance and I cleaned as good as I could. If it was not good enough for Mia, I would do it again. I spoiled her by cooking and even washing up afterwards. In the evening I would turn off the TV and spend quality time with Mia. She would tell me how her day went and what was her thoughts were. I was doing my best to be a good husband that would help and listen to her. 
I had a picture of Christopher and Nicholas that was standing in front of a bush. This picture was smuggled to the past and hid it in my desk. Mia found the picture one day when she was looking for something and was quite upset when she seen it. Why do you have a picture of two men hidden in here? She asked. They are some men I know. I am sure you will meet them at some stage. Mia thought it was strange that I had the picture hidden away. I could not tell her that they were her future sons. Mia accepted that they were my friends, but insisted that we put the picture in a frame. Her reasoning was that if she was a friend of someone, she did not want her picture to be locked away hidden from sight. I did much better this time as a husband and was proud of myself. There was one problem. Mia was not the wife that I remembered. She was more frustrated and distant than the woman I remembered. She often got mad at me that I was so submissive that I nearly spoiled her. Mia felt like I set her on a pedestal and I clung to her. She wanted a strong and independent husband that would do things with her and not for her. She was also annoyed at my knowledge. I still remembered all the theory I learned as a teacher and would often discuss things with Mia. Another dangerous thing was that I also knew the future. I knew that we would soon get cell phones and the internet. I knew who the next president of the USA would be or when Madonna would release a new CD. This annoyed Mia. I remembered when we were watching a documentary about Donald Trump and told Mia he would one day be the president. Once again, Mia thought this was a ridiculous thought as she thought that Americans would not be stupid enough to vote for him. Christopher was born 15 months after we were married, so I was looking forward to this again. The first marriage was a time when we planned and prayed that we would get a child. There was no child as wanted as Christopher was. I felt the same again, and I was getting excited about Christopher coming back in my life. I told Mia that having children is the best achievement we would ever do and our children would enrich our lives. We should try to have a child and assured her that she would be the best mom there ever was. Mia was not so enthusiastic. She was studying to be a nurse. I would like to have children, she said, but not now. We are students and live a very simple life. I think we should have jobs and a house before we even think of children. We are still very young. We need to have a secure life first before children comes. In this way they will be secure. They would have everything they need, and we would be wiser. This was not the answer I remembered. This was not the Mia I knew. I could not convince Mia that we could have children now, and they would be happy. Mia wanted her life to be financially secure. She wanted a career. She was not ready for children. This means she used birth control. I knew something was strange and that Mia was not the woman I remembered. One night I sat up in our bed as I could not sleep. I really wanted a cigarette. I smoked in my old life but knew that Mia did not like it, so I did not smoke when I had a second chance. As I sat on the bed, I could hear Mia talk in her sleep. I love you Steen she said as she slept. I could not believe my ears. Mia talked about the man she married after we got a divorce after the first marriage. Now that we were in the past, she still had him in her heart. She of course have not met him. It was part of the Mia that was transported back to the past. This meant that she still loved him. What about me? I tried forgetting this the next day. I had something else to worry about. She showed me to look at the picture of Christopher and Nicholas. This is strange, she said, the two men here are fading and half invisible, yet the bushes has not faded. I wonder why. Mia was right. The boys in the picture were nearly transparent, as if they were ghosts. I moved the picture in another area where there was not as much sun and hope that would help. To be honest, I did not think so much about why the picture changed. 
At the same time, I was very sad at the change, as it was my most precious procession. I knew that I had to take care of it. Mia was not that interested in having children until we had a job and house. I wondered if it was because she was mature or was there something else. At any rate, I continued being the best husband that I could. I was very proud on the change and the fact that I have learned from my mistakes. I loved cooking and this became an important part of the day. I loved using my imagination and looked forward to we had guests. I loved their reaction to tasting the food. One would think that I had a happy marriage this time. I learned from all my mistakes, and I was the perfect husband. Yet, Mia was not the same. It was as if she never smiled. It was like she was not happy. I remembered the first time we were married and the love and affection we had. This could not be seen the second time around. It was as if we were more like roommates than a married couple. Of course, we talked about it. Mia did not like these talks as she said she could not express how she felt. It's like I did all these things before, she said, we should be a married couple that is deeply in love with each other. It seems like I am in an unrealistic dream as this life is not the one I want. I think there must be something mentally wrong with me. I would hold her hand and say nothing. I wanted at times to tell her the truth about time travel. This would either make her mad or she would not believe in it. I just had to hope that the love we had would win at the end. The day came and went when Christopher should have been born. We had no baby and Mia was still sure that she did not want one. We did not have a house or stable jobs. Love was not enough. I was so sad the day that Christopher should have been born. I missed my children since I went back in time and was looking forward to them back in my life. When I looked at the picture I could only see a bush. The boys were not there. I must have stared at the picture for ages thinking what has happened. Why was Christopher and Nicholas not there? I did not say much that day and just slumped around while I looked at the picture. I did not feel like doing anything. I felt so confused and sad. Mia noticed that I was not smiling and happy. She was surprised when I said that she could cook. She asked me why I was suddenly so distressed. I showed her the photo, and she just sighed and asked what was the big problem. She did not understand why I was obsessed over a picture. If she only knew the reason why. The only reason why the boys disappeared in the picture was because they did not exist in this time dimension. They were conceived from love and the desire to have them in our lives. Things were different this time. It meant the two most important people in my life would now just be a dream. I mourned that the boys would not be born. It felt as if I killed them. Even the memory of them in the photo was gone. I was sad and depressed. However, this time I did not lock myself in my room. I would just slump around the house and not say much. I started asking myself what would happen now. I got what I wished, but everything was different and everything was worse. This was becoming a nightmare. Something was different to what I expected. It took some weeks for me to realize what it was. The problem was that Mia did not feel the same way as she done in the first marriage. Yes. I was a much better husband, but her heart was not in the marriage. It was as if married life became a duty for her. It did not help that one day she told me a guest would be coming for dinner. He was someone that she knew from her voluntary work. I was shocked when Steen showed up to dinner. He was her new husband before I went back in time. I did not say much and just observed Mia and Steen. It was obvious that they were good friends and had a special connection. Mia was different with him. She lit up and smiled a lot more. When she looked at me, the smile would disappear. That night I remembered the old woman that let me travel to the past. 
She did warn me that people would be different and I would make new mistakes. In a way she told me this would be worse than what I had. I was depressed and sad. Mia and I had an argument after I asked her if she was cheating on me with Steen. Mia shouted that she made a promise to be faithful and will always keep that promise. She did not like my jealousy. We did not speak for days. When I came home from university one day, there was a note from Mia. She told me that she was leaving me and would be seeking a divorce. Mia admitted that she did not love me and could not remember a time that she did love me. Our marriage was between two immature adults that wanted to play house. The letter finished off by her admitting that our marriage was a mistake. I tried contacting Mia and telling her that we could work things out. However, she would not listen to me and refused to discuss marriage. I was once again depressed and hid inside our house. I ended up by moving, hoping that would help, but it did not. After we were divorced for 14 months, Mia got married to Steen. As for me, I was once again alone. This time I was very alone, as I did not have children. A tear ran down my face as I thought of one word. Alone. The End